Hello and welcome to a video about PyTest. We're going to be talking about fixtures and everything you need to know about them. Uh, there's a lot to cover, so I don't know, grab your snacks or whatever. Let's jump into it. Okay, so to get started, we are going to set up a virtual env and we're going to install PyTest. This, of course, it is a PyTest video. And we're going to be talking about fixtures. Uh, fixtures to me are, well, at least PyTest fixtures, represent kind of two different things. Uh, one of them is you know, canned data that you're going to use throughout your test. And the other is side effects or a state that you want to be in for your test. Uh, we're going to cover both of those today, as well as the strategies that I usually use to make fixtures. And then we're going to talk about all the different features that fixtures have. And there are quite a few of them. Uh, we're just going to write a little test file. Oops. <laughs> I, <forgot to> delete. <laughs> I was trying around. I was trying some stuff before, before I started to make sure it works. Okay, anyway, we're going to start from a blank file. And we're going to make a little, small little test. Uh, this test is not going to actually test anything significant because we're trying to focus on fixtures today rather than actually testing code. So all of these examples are going to be a little bit canned, but you'll see how it works nonetheless. OK, uh, let's just say that we have you know, assert x equals 1, and you know, x is some value here. Uh, maybe we'll make a little class. OK, maybe we will test something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Return one. Okay, so we're gonna make a C and do C dot F equals one. Okay, so now we have something non-trivial here. And if we run this test, uh, it works fine, great. Um, but maybe we have another function G that returns something else. Uh, this should be test F. And maybe we have test G. And you'll notice that we are making more than one C and you know, it would be nice if we could share this in some way. This is one example of fixturing where you may want to reuse some data between tests. Now, I'd argue that, uh, oops, say G. I'd argue that it's probably not worth it to try and deduplicate these one, this line here, probably overdrawing a little bit. But alas, let's, let's use this as a way to introduce the first way that you might fixture something. And so we're going to make a PyTest fixture. In order to do this, we need to import PyTest, and we need to decorate a function with PyTest.fixture. This is what registers the function uh, with the PyTest framework. And you define a function here. You can return a value, and this will be used as the fixtures throughout the test. So in this case, it's not that interesting. We're just going to fixture the value of this C instance here. Uh, once we have defined a fixture, it can be used by any function or other fixture by passing it as a named argument or, or <laughs> by adding a named argument to the function. Now, this is perhaps the part of PyTest that I like the least because it's a little bit magical, uh, but this argument name matches this function name and PyTest, the framework, will insert the fixture value into here uh, sort of, well, very magically. <laughs> It basically uh, inspects this function object, finds the argument name, and uh, registers the fixtures based on that. And then once that's done, you can reference that fixture here. And we've essentially deduplicated a little bit of code here. Now, I would argue that this is a, probably a bad use of fixtures, but it's to demonstrate how things work. And if we run this now, you can see that yeah, we're, we're calling this fixture and we're passing it in, in those two places. This is an example of using a fixture as data, uh, you know, a, a value that you want to use throughout your test, or maybe you set up some state and pass it through. Uh, the other use of fixtures, and probably the one that I use a lot more, is to set up a test state, either modify the, the world or you know, monkey patch something. I haven't done a video on monkey patching, so I won't <laughs> mention that yet, um, or I won't show an example of that. We'll, we'll think of something else. Um, but you might use this to set up a state. One example of a state is a temporary directory. Now, there is actually a built-in fixture in PyTest called temp underscore dir, uh, or temp underscore path. There's also temp dir. Um, but let's imagine that we didn't know that existed and wanted to make our own temporary directory. So we might, uh, we might make a fixture called temporary dir. I'm intentionally trying to not mask the PyTest one. And let's say that we used the uh, temp file module to make that temporary directory. So we can do that by doing with temp file dot temporary directory as tempter. Uh, and you might imagine you could just return tempter here. However, uh, if you're familiar with how context managers work, 
When this context manager exits, that temporary directory will be cleaned up immediately. So this code is incorrect and it won't work. Uh, but you can actually use yield here and PyTest will pick this up automatically and know that you know, this, is, this is yielded out, it's a generator, and so it will treat the stuff before the yield as the setup and the stuff after as a teardown. Now we don't really have anything after here other than the management of this context manager. And so now if we put tempor temporary dir into here and I know, print temporary dir, uh, we do have to run PyTest with dash s so that it so, or, so that it actually shows us our print statements here. Uh, and you'll see that we are able to acquire a temporary directory. And if we look inside temp, well, there's a bunch of other junk here, uh, but you'll see that there's this directory is cleaned up automatically. And that's kind of the setup and teardown of the test. Now, if we wanted a, you know, a, a more straightforward example to show you exactly how this executes, uh, pytest.fixture, uh, setup teardown, and print uh, setup yields, and then print teardown. And then if we have another test here, setup teardown, setup teardown, uh, print in test. And let's say we ran just this test specifically, I test dash st.py dash k this, like that particular test. You'll see that we get the setup, then it runs the test, the test then succeeds, then it runs the teardown afterwards. And so that's kind of the setup teardown part of things. Okay, so those are the two basic types of fixtures. You either have return fixtures or yield fixtures. We've shown that they can be used by having arguments in a test function. Uh, I also mentioned that they can be used in fixtures. So if we were to move this fixture slightly just to show this, uh, we can actually use temporary dir inside this fixture. And so Fixtures can call fixtures or can inherit fixtures, etc. Uh, you might imagine that you could just call this function. Um, PyTest used to allow that, but this was changed because if you call a fixture function, nothing's going to tear it down. Uh, so it was it was changed so that it's very explicit that PyTest is managing these fixtures, and so you want to use this to use the fixture value. Uh, I'll actually show what it does if we uh, did it the wrong way, for instance, by calling this here. We run, let's just run the whole file. Uh, you'll see that we get this error here, fixture called directly. Fixtures are not meant to be called directly and you know, there's a bunch of docs that explain it. Um, but yes, going back to, they can be reused here in temporary dir. And uh, now this, this passes correctly. All right, so I've shown that they can be used by arguments. There are actually two other ways that fixtures get triggered in PyTest. Uh, the first is if you don't actually need the value of the fixture, you can use the use fixtures uh, marker from PyTest. So let's say that uh, this function, I mean, this is kind of a bad example. Like uh, this function needed, let's say the side effects of this setup teardown. You can use pytest.mark.use fixtures and then pass in the fixture name here. So setup teardown. And now if we were to run this test G function, K test G, you'll see that it is still triggering this setup and teardown, but we didn't need to add it as an argument to this function. This is one of the other ways to trigger this. Uh, by default, uh, so this, this is one way to trigger it. There is another way to automatically trigger fixtures, and this is the auto use functionality, which allows you to make it run for everything, or at least everything in scope. So now I don't need to explicitly list setup teardown anywhere and just rely on its side effects. So tear down, we'll just leave that one there. Uh, so this function now implicitly gets this fixture because we have set auto use to true. And so if we do pytest-st.py and do dash k to select that test, you'll see that we still get that setup and teardown even though we didn't, we didn't have it as a parameter and we didn't use, uh, use fixtures. Okay, the next thing that I wanna talk about now that we're, you know, we're potentially running this setup and teardown a bunch more times than we want to. You can see we've got setup, teardown, setup, teardown, setup, teardown. Uh, maybe you don't want it to run per function. And so that brings us into fixture scoping. By default, fixtures will be set up and torn down every time a test function is run. Uh, but sometimes you may want to change that either to be per class or per module or the entire test session. And you can do that by setting the scope of a fixture inside this decorator here. 
So let's say that uh, this setup and teardown is only supposed to be run at the very beginning of the module and at the very end of the module. You can set uh, scope equals module here. And you know, there's there's also the default value is function. Uh, there's also I believe, package and session. The one that I use the most if I'm gonna use anything at all is session. Uh, I rarely have stuff that is per module, but occasionally you do. Uh, so if we set something, let's actually use session because that <laughs> I think that's that's the more common case that you're probably gonna run into. So now if we run this same test again, you'll see that it is only set up and torn down once. So it's set up once before the tests even start running. It then runs those three tests, and then finally at the end it tears down that, that fixture. So that's kind of our, our scoping here. Uh, I also mentioned earlier that fixtures are hooked up by name, which sometimes isn't what you want. Sometimes uh, maybe you have an ugly function name or it's imported from somewhere else and you want to turn something into a fixture. Um, and sometimes, I don't know, you just want a nicer name for your fixtures. You can actually change the name of your fixtures. So let's say, let's make a new fixture. <laughs> let's say that we had a fixture that was named, I don't know, some ugly function name. Maybe this came from some external package and we have no control over it. Uh, it you know, is a function that does something useful. We'll probably just I don't know, return five. Uh, it'd be kind of a pain to use this function name in our tests. Uh, so you can actually rename them by setting name equals this here. So now you would use it just the same as before. If we have fix here, put the little f string to show that we've got this. Uh, and so even though this function has a really ugly name, slash k this, uh, you'll see that we're able to pass it through using the name fix. So that's kind of a way to rename fixtures. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about with fixtures is parameterization. I did a video on parameterize, and generally I would recommend using parameterize over parameterized fixtures just because it's way simpler, but I will link that video in the description. Uh, you can actually make a fixture yield a bunch of different values. And uh, let's say, let's make another fixture here as well, pytest.fixture. And you can do that by setting params. And this is a tuple, so you know, let's say we wanted this fixture to represent a value plus you know, one, two, three, four, five, uh, some ints. <laughs> or let's just say an int, I don't know. Um, and the way that we reference these values, the way that we get them out of these is actually by using another fixture. There's this somewhat magical fixture in PyTest called request. And uh, you can access the value of the parameter by looking at request.param. And this is sort of dynamic per fixture, so it won't be shared amongst the other ones. Uh, but if you do request.param now, let's say that, test an int, an int, and then print dot int equals. So this is like a, a silly example here. So what this will actually do is we'll yield the values three, four, five, six. And so we'll get four tests just by having this test be decorated with this, or annotated, I don't know, by having this parameter that's a fixture. It's also kind of hard to talk about using a fixture in PyTest, which is another reason that I, I'm not so happy about this magic. I don't have any ideas about how to make it better though, which is, I guess, why we're stuck with it. But, uh, so here's an example. You know, We were able to use parameterize to pass multiple values out of a single fixture. Now I would, or sorry, params. I would recommend using parameterize in almost all cases. There are, I think, I think I've used this feature a total of one time in all of the code that I have put on GitHub, although someone will probably prove me wrong. But I think the only use of this I have is in my text editor where um, I, yeah. So I, I test my text editor either with a fake runner that's in process or a much slower runner using tmux in the background. So. I, I do use this uh, params equals here, which actually shows us another feature here. You can uh, change the display of the params by using the IDs. And so in this case, the fake runner gets the test ID fake rather than function object one or whatever, whatever it would have been. Um, so you can, change, you can change the name of the parameterize. This is very similar to how parameterize works. So there's nothing super special here. Um, but you can see this This is a very simple fixture which just returns the prem directly. And I'm really using this to make a whole bunch of tests automatically take on uh, these two functions. Okay, what else do we need to talk about? One last thing. 
one last thing. We have to talk about uh, fixture sharing. So by default, uh, a fixture is shared in whatever it's enclosed in. So if you had a test, oops, that's from something else. Oh, <laughs> right, we moved directories. Uh, if you have a test uh, or a test class, and this has functions in it, so let's test one for instance, uh, and we have a fixture inside the class, uh, let's call it fix. Uh, you'll notice that we have a fixture called fix up above here as well. So we're actually going to be shadowing this fixture, but we'll get a different value down here. And let's just do yield five. And if we did fix here, actually, did I yield five above? I bet I did. Dang it. All right, we're going to yield 10. That way it's different. Um, print uh, got fix. This will hopefully show you two things. One, that fixtures are scoped to this test, but also that fixtures can override others. And so now if we were to run this test now, hs-k this, uh, all right, test names have to be uh, test my thing. Start with test, does it end with test? I don't know, I don't use test classes. Why isn't this working? Oh, cause, uh, right, this is not gonna match now. There we go. Uh, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, because it matched everything else. Okay, here we go. Uh, wait, that didn't work at all. I'm a liar. <laughs> uh, oh, this is supposed to be. <laughs> Why did it? That's weird. I used the wrong decorator. <laughs> okay, so now it should actually say ten. There we go. Um, so this did a <laughs> this did a very weird thing, which is that it called pytest param, which is a function that can take a single argument, and then it just assigned it. So it, it did decorator stuff that kind of did nothing. Um, but anyway, this fixture overrides the outer fixture. By default, the scope is whatever they're contained in, so anything else using fix in this module will not get this one. Um, within a module, that's one scope that fixtures can be shared. Or if you need to share fixtures amongst a bunch of different files, you can put them in a conftest.py, and any directories downward from that conftest.py will inherit those fixtures. Uh, so to show you an example of some of this, uh, in pre-commit, there are some fixtures that live in the root conftest.py fixture. Yeah, I have my own version of temporary directories for historical reasons. Some of the tempter stuff in PyTest didn't exist at this time, so I wrote my own version of it. Um, but you can see this in gitter uh, fixture here. If we look for things that are using that, uh, you'll see that they're used in all sorts of tests, like in the commands directory, but also uh, in things above the commands directory, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if we look for other conf test files here, uh, oops, should put a star there. Oh, I only have one here. <laughs> uh, Babby, sure, Babby probably has more than one conf test. Yeah, here we go. So in this case, we have two different conf tests. I've defined a set of fixtures that are in this feature subdirectory. For instance, the, the one that we saw earlier, you know, this, uh, where was it? This uh, run fixture. And this means that the uh, run fixture can only be used inside of this directory here. So if we were to try and make, uh, you know, another test here and try and use the run fixture, PyTest is going to say, I don't know where that fixture is. These are the ones that are available. And that's because it's only scoped to those subdirectories. Uh, the other way that you can make fixtures available is via PyTest plugins. Uh, that's probably a whole different topic, so I'm not going to cover it here. Um, but, but, but plugins can also make fixtures available um, in, in these. So anyway, that's kind of all the things about fixtures. I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, if you found this video useful, uh, or I hope you found this video useful, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Button. Button, why are you not working? <laughs>